Hi everyone, welcome to the start of another reading vlog. I'm sorry that I look so white, but uh, the only light source I've got available to me at the moment is a window. So, this is a reading vlog and I'm really excited because this is a collaboration with B from Mama Needs to Read a Romance. So I'm going to insert a clip if you have not met B before. Please meet the very lovely Bee. Hi, my name is Bee and I run the booktube channel Mama Needs to Read Romance. I love to talk all things books. I enjoy book hunts, book hauls, book humor. I'm sometimes known for my skits, which can be hopefully funny <laughs> or at least a little bit amusing and not obnoxious, but I love to talk all things books. My bread and butter tends to be contemporary romance, historical romance, and recently fantasy romance, which I'm really starting to enjoy. I've been a booktuber for about a year and and a half now and I have enjoyed every moment. I live on the East Coast in the United States. I am a homemaker, former primary school teacher, just like Steph. I've got three awesome kiddos, all who have very different needs and it keeps me on my toes, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm so grateful to Steph for being willing to do this collab with me. I always look to her for hockey romance recommendations, although all of her recs are great ones. I'm gonna be doing all kinds of sports in my vlog and I just can't not wait to see Steph's video. I'm expecting lots of hockey romance stuff. So B reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in doing this collab with her, which is a reading vlog where we read Christmas themed sports romances or holiday themed sports romances and vlog the experience. So of course I said yes, because B knows that I have been on a massive hockey romance reading spree this year. And yeah, that's what we've decided to do. So I have gone on to KU a couple of times over the last month or so and sort of had a look and added some things to a wish list that I would like to read because my KU TBR is currently full. So I haven't downloaded all of them because I'm going to be reading them one at a time and swapping them out <laughs> so that I don't lose my other books, which I do mean to read at some point. And yeah, I thought I would just scroll through the screen so you can see what's on my radar because I don't know specifically which ones I'm going to read. There's a whole lot of them and they will, and they will be listed down below but I thought I would scroll through them first. You guys can see them. And then, yeah, we'll talk about how this is gonna go. So my goal for this is to read, well, a lot of them are 100 pages or less, which is great because it means I'm probably going to be able to get through a lot of them, but I'm going to be reading them over the course of a week, but mostly on the weekends. And that means that this vlog is going to take place probably over a couple of weekends before it goes up. I was going to film most of it this weekend, except I am unsurprisingly not feeling 100% which is just par for the course of me this year. So if I sound a little bit throat scratchy, that's because my throat is killing me. And uh, it wasn't helped by the fact that I went to the zoo yesterday with my school for an excursion and we took 80, 80 total, five and six year olds <laughs> to the zoo. And uh, we had to walk around. And I think about five minutes after we started walking, I had the first complaint of my feet are sore five minutes after we started. And we were there for about four hours. <laughs> So it, it was a fairly full on day. The kids were great. They really enjoyed it. We got to see baby meerkats. I'll insert a picture on the screen. Baby meerkats. We saw the gorilla. Uh, I didn't get to take as many photos of the animals as I wanted to because I was coordinating small children. But it was really fun. We saw the lemurs first, first up and the kids were just fascinated because you got to walk in the space and the lemurs just walk all around the enclosure. Like we, the kids were like, can we pet them? Like, no, you can't pet them, but you can let them walk past and you can say hi to them. And uh, they were just enamored with them. So it was really lovely. So yeah, I, I don't have much of a voice left. I've got to go and do some errands and things because I'm going to be passed out on the couch for most of the day, just chilling and, and reading. I've done all my filming this morning. I've been filming for about two hours and I've got the majority of it done. So yeah, this afternoon is gonna be pretty quiet and then I, I have to see how I feel later in the afternoon because I'm supposed to go to a family Christmas party tomorrow. But if my throat's still like this, like there's gonna be a lot of older people there. And you know, just in general, I don't like going places when I'm not feeling 100%. I have uh, done numerous, numerous COVID tests in the last three days. 
and all of all of them come back negative so it's probably just a cold or something like that and yeah we have we have plenty of things coming up at work in the next week so i really don't want to be sick and we've got a day in the life on tuesday where i get to go and actually be a grade two teacher for half a day and then i get to meet my class the following week so yeah i just like there are things that i really want to participate in and i don't want to feel like rubbish so i'm going to go you know buy myself plenty of healthy foods to eat through the next little while and just manage my symptoms <laughs> so I, I feel like all this year all i have done is say oh, yeah i'm sick again i've never been sick so often in a school year ever but do you know what will make me feel better holiday themed sports romances it really will make me feel better hi everyone so it is much later now and i have done my filming i've been to the supermarket i've read a book for another project and i am about to start reading the first hockey themed christmas novella this one is dirty christmas by marilyn kelly it's part of her slayers world which I can't remember if I've read something in this world, but anyway, I'm going to read it anyway. It's about, let's say, 82 pages long. And it's the perfect day for reading because it is rainy and miserable outside. And I just want to sit on the couch. So Dirty Christmas was actually kind of sweet. We have Noel, who is a hockey player, who has this holiday trip to, or this christmas trip to las vegas planned with one of his teammates and then at the very last second the teammate basically hijacks the car and drives them to this small town where there's obviously a woman who he has a history with and is trying to make things right but ends up stranding noel with misty who is the girl's sister and so there's this forced proximity situation that then also becomes a snowed in situation later on and and while they're waiting for diesel and misty's sister to sort of figure things out they're just hanging out together wrapping presents and then they get a message to say that they're you know they're they'll see them later that night and they end up going to buy a christmas tree and decorating misty's parents place for christmas and being snowed in and it is open door it is very short and very fun and noel is just a cinnamon roll of a hero and misty thinks that initially he's a playboy because he's very flirty and that's not her thing because she's she's quite serious in terms of relationships and then he's like well actually yes i'm flirty because it's fun and people know that it's not serious and i, I don't lose friends over it it's just the way that i am but when it comes to relationships i am serious it's not something that he takes for granted and it was just really sweet it was very sweet and I enjoyed it. So this is a good start to the uh, sports romance novella reading a thon. <laughs> so the next book we're going to try is actually a football romance, but I did just find out that it's part of a two book series that is all sports Christmas or Christmas sports romances. And the second one is a hockey one. So I've added that potentially to the list as well. But this one is titled and you know, honestly, the holiday season truly gives with some of these titles. It's called Santa's Sack. And it is about a football player. I haven't started reading it yet. I just read the blurb to get the an idea of what it's about. Because of course I didn't do that when I actually put these on my list. So it is about a football player whose helicopter breaks down and he gets stranded, I think in a small town and it's potentially an age gap story as well. So it is also about 80 pages, so we might as well read it today. Okay, so we have the first DNF because, well, two reasons. So the first one is that the heroine in this story has been dumped on Christmas Eve and she's obviously upset about it, totally fine, get it. But she keeps bringing up that she was dumped by her boyfriend for another man. And what, like saying it once is fine because it happens and that's fine bringing it up multiple times starts to sound homophobic. And I'm not all about that. You can be unhappy with your boyfriend for breaking up with you and for not doing things that you thought he was going to do. But making it about who he's actually in love with, not okay in my book. And I could have almost sort of pushed through to the end because you know it's only 80 pages, but then we start getting the, I've never really liked my body and I'm out. I get it. You don't have to be 100% comfortable in your body. I don't always feel comfortable in my body either. But I, I coupled with the other thing, I, like I don't want to read it because something tells me that this is just going to continue. So we're going to put this book to the side and we will read another one very soon. Oh, shit! What is that sign? 
Hey guys, so it is Thursday the 11th of December. It's been a while since I've updated this vlog and you will have seen that I went into the city and I went to see the Bluey Maya Christmas windows, which if you are Australian, you know the Maya windows are kind of an institution here. Maya is one of our department stores. They always do Christmas windows. Now, I have not been to actually see the Christmas windows, like actually line up and, and see them. I've walked past them a few times. I have not actually gone to see the Christmas windows for probably 25 years, but it was bluey. So of course I went and I decided to go on a Thursday afternoon because it's always hectic and there were plenty of people looking at the windows and they have lines and everything that you have to go through. But I figured if I went on a Thursday afternoon, it wouldn't be as hectic as it would be on a Friday night or a Saturday. So yes, but anyway, my camera is flashing that the battery is dying. So I'm gonna come back, I'll probably have showered and then I'll talk a bit more about what I got up to. So I'm back. And I think before I said it's the 11th of December, it is not the 11th of December. It is the 7th of December. My brain, it is the 7th of December. And uh, while I was waiting for this camera to charge, which it's not fully charged, so who knows if it's gonna last the, uh, the start of this. I have started reading Get Frosted by Amy Aislin. This is a Christmas small town romance. It is sports romance adjacent. Both the male main characters, this is an MM romance, are former pro hockey players who have retired and come to this small town of Christmas Hills. One one of the main characters was born here, so it's his hometown. The other is the best friend of our of the hero's brother and their rivals. And they both manage pubs in town, so there's that rivalry as well. I, I don't even know how far I'm into it. I'm 10% in. It's really fun, I'm enjoying it. But I said I would sort of share. I went to see the Bluey display. I also went to Fed Square and saw the big Christmas tree. It's the same Christmas tree, or it has been the same Christmas tree for the last couple of years, but it was really nicely set up. There was some beautiful floral archways and things like that. Of course, I couldn't take any photos because all of the uh, influencers were in there taking photos and posing and doing all sorts of things, but you know what? That's fine. I also went to Dimmicks and Dimmicks is kind of one of those iconic bookstores. I've shown it in many vlogs before. If I tend to go into the city, I always go into Dimmicks even if I don't actually buy anything but I did buy things today so it was so funny because I saw this book I actually filmed a clip of it I was just talking to Shay about it the other day because she had it it was a Barnes and Noble exclusive but Dimmix has it and uh, it's terribly overpriced here but it is a hardback special edition of Archer's Voice and this one has Mia Sheridan's annotations in it I mean look at that that's so pretty and it has the sprayed edges and her annotations in the margins and I figured that this can go into my annotation pile. It is very pretty. Merry Christmas to me. You're gonna hear me say that a lot in this clip. I also picked up three picture books. So I have picked up The Kindest Red, which I have read The Proudest Blue, but I have not read The Kindest Red. So 
I saw that and thought, why not? I picked up Jane Godwin's new book, Can You Teach a Fish to Climb a Tree? I figured this might be good next year when I'm teaching grade two. And also I saw this Christmas book. This is a Jackie French and Bruce Watley collaboration. Again, this is a dynamite combo. This is Christmas Always Comes. And I believe it is a historic, it's like a historical story. So it's set in Australia in 1932 and it's during a drought over Christmas. Now I did film a short of what I'm going to show you next but not everyone watches shorts because I sure don't but B actually sent me a Christmas gift so the tag did get lost in here so it said I just wanted to send a little thank you for including me in your bookish world this year you're truly a light to the community that is so sweet and I don't see myself that way at all but that is very kind of you to say. Uh, this book was a six star read for me and I hope you love it as much as I do. Now I actually have read this so there are a lot of books on my wish list that I have read that they're just books that I would like to own because I've read them. So she got me Make It Sweet which I read last year when I did my foodie romance vlog. So the hero Lucian is a former hockey player who's working at his grandmother's estate place and he likes to cook and bake and the heroine in the story is an actress who has been on a long-running fantasy show and her character has just been killed off and it is their romance and it was utterly delightful. Kristen Callahan is just amazing. We love Kristen Callahan on this channel. So thank you B. This was really lovely. And then I also had some mail today so we might as well make this a haul, right? I need scissors but I don't want to get scissors. I had a Stanley knife here and I have no idea where it's gone. Okay, as I said, not bookish related. But now that I'm doing more planning things, I was trying to get myself a pair of those fancy tweezers that people use for planners. Not because I wanted them, because people use them for planning, but also I just realized I probably actually need a pair that's dedicated for craft. Interestingly enough, they're rather expensive when you try to buy one. So this is a whole stack of craft tweezers, which is fine. I'll add it to my little craft collection and it does fold up to this. This was like $3 more than buying one pair of tweezers for using with stickers. I don't know. Then there's this box. I had to buy a Kris Kringle present and I ended up going with Wordle because I didn't know this existed. So that is a Kris Kringle present and then I got another one to give to my parents <laughs> because they will get a kick out of it. And it might be something that we can play on Christmas Day. And then I also finally ordered a copy of Persepolis because I have been meaning to read this for ages. It's been on my wish list for ages. So I just bought it. I'm going to read it in the new year and I'm very excited about it because this has been on my TBR for the longest time. I don't know what it is about my brain, but particularly graphic novels, I will pick them up faster if I have them in physical form. I contemplated buying it as an ebook, but I know I won't pick it up as fast. And then the last box is <laughs> the other Christmas present to myself. So this is an order from Books Ever After, which is an independent romance bookstore here in Australia. I think, uh, dropping things. I think they're based in South Australia? No, New South Wales. Based in New South Wales. There is a sticker. This one says, once upon a time there was smut. Let's get rid of the box, shall we? I'm trying to cut the bubble wrap without cutting the books. So a little while back, Books Ever After, so they, as I said, small independent romance bookstore. They specialize in special editions and foiled, particularly foiled book covers. So they don't always necessarily change the book covers, but they add a foiled element to them. And so they had Egotistical Puckboy, which is the first book in the Puckboy series by Saxon James and Eden Finley. And they finally got the next four books in the series. I've been waiting for the foiled editions to come out before I purchase them. So here we are. So there is book two, Irresponsible Puckboy. I don't feel so bad about these because I've already read them and I know that I enjoyed them and I will probably come back to them because they're very easy, very funny, queer hockey romances. There is Shameless Puck Boy, which is book three. Foolish Puck Boy, look at that called foiling. And also Clueless Puck Boy, which is the most recent one. So this one has purple foil, which is a bit hard to see in this light, but it is nonetheless very cool. Now I have the special edition of the Puck Boy series. And hopefully I will get another chance to see Eden Finley and Saxon James and get all of these signed at some point. Kids. They are fun. But yes, that is uh, my impromptu book haul and I am going to keep reading Get Frosted because this has been very fun so far and it is 8.40 and I would like to finish this book tonight. <laughs> so, not me setting myself up for failure. Get Frosted is so stinking cute. It is such a cute book and it's like book three in this, I think I said it's like an interconnected standalone Christmas, small town Christmas series. Anyway, I. I don't think they're 
all sports romances. There might be one other one because it came up when I did a search for holiday sports romances. But I mean, Amy Aislinn, I've read a number of her books now, all her hockey books, and they are just, they're just so lovely. Like really, really lovely. So this one is about Mick and Rudy. So Mick has sort of lived in his brother's shadow for a while, but his older brother also played hockey and he went into the NHL a year after his brother and, and whatnot. And so Mick has come home to the small town. He's, he and his brother are co-running the family's pub and Mick and his brother Josh have the most beautiful relationship in here. Josh is also married to Mick's best friend. And there is a, a there's mentions of the fact that Josh's wife has preeclampsia. So a lot of things happen in this book because Mick is stepping up to help out his brother who is obviously very stressed about his wife. Then you have Rudy who is Josh's best friend and was Mick's rival when they were playing hockey. And you know, that's just entirely a cover for the fact that Rudy really likes Mick. And it takes Mick a hot second to figure this out, right? It was so cute. Like they end up coaching Josh's kids hockey team while Josh can't do it and so they're forced to spend time together and then they realize and then you know Mick finally realizes that Josh is legitimately flirting with him and it's just adorable and then also we have sort of Rudy's backstory where he grew up with a very nomadic lifestyle and so he finds it really hard to stay in one place and so he's been in this small town for two and a half years and you can like he's just got itchy feet because this is the longest he's been it anywhere and he gets offered this job which is five hours away it's that balance between this relationship and him not knowing whether he can stay or whether he needs to go and it was great the town was quirky and fun there's actually a map at the start i meant to show you guys at the start i am definitely going to try and read the rest of the books in the series it may not be this year but i will definitely be trying to read them because this one was very very entertaining and the town is called Christmas Falls and oh, I'm just trying to find the map. Map, map, where's the map? Is it gonna focus? So this is the map of Christmas Falls. It has all the places. Everything is, you know, has Christmas names and all of the stories in this world are set here. So yeah, I'm kind of curious to read it and to see which characters actually get stories. I had fun. This was a great one. Well done, KU. And now I think I need to go to bed. Hi everyone. Happy Saturday. It is the 9th of December. Um, and I have a stack of videos to edit I was filming this morning. So I'm gonna ed start editing some of those today. And then I think this afternoon, I'm gonna try some of the Mexican candies that Megan sent me, which is in another vlog. I'll leave that linked on the screen. And yeah, then I'm gonna read a little bit later this afternoon. I am here with <laughs> all of the food that came from the US. So there is a whole stack of Mexican candy and Funyuns. Some of this I'm kind of nervous about. I, I don't want to say I'm a picky eater. I just, I have very specific food sensitivities, but um, we're going to try it all. I have tried some, like there's these Picositas belts. There was, I think, strawberry ones. There was something and I ate them all. I didn't even film it. They were gone as soon as I got them. But yes, I thought I would try them on camera since, you know, we're filming a vlog. So if any of you follow along with the Alona Andrews live streams, we were reading the Innkeeper Chronicles and one of the main side characters in that series is constantly eating Funyuns. They're not as oniony as I thought they were going to be, so that's that's probably a good thing because Onions and I do not, do not always agree. We'll save the rest of those for later. There are sour pickle balls and <laughs> also kind of worried about this because I don't eat pickles. Very odd. Like we definitely don't have anything like this over here. That is really weird. That one was weird and it made my whole mouth go blue. <laughs> I had to go brush my teeth because I was just, anyway. Not quite sure the sour pickle balls are for me, but that's okay. Then there's these gummy worms blood crawlers. I'm worried this is gonna make a giant mess everywhere because I'm opening it from the wrong end. These are so strange. <laughs> and just to be clear, things that you, you've never had before are always just a little bit odd. <laughs> How does one eat these without getting it everywhere? Okay, so it's a jelly worm in sweet chili. I don't quite know what the flavor is <laughs> of the actual jelly snake, but it's fine. It's just a bit messy to eat. Okay, so next up we have these Picositas belts. And so I'm assuming all of these are like sour things with chili. 
Also, I'm not the biggest chilli person in the world, much to the um, chagrin of my parents who put chilli in everything. So long. Okay. It's spicy, but there's enough sour sugar on it to... Thanks for that interruption. As I was saying, spicy but enough sour sugar in it to take the heat out of it. I don't mind those. Those will 100% get eaten today. Then there's these candied mango covered in chili. I have actually tried these. These I'm really enjoying. The thing with these though is because they do have the chili on it, actually same thing with the belts. I'm not gonna be able to eat lots at any given point just cause as I said, not a chili person. Delicious. And the last snack that I'm gonna try is this Goo Goo Cluster, which is peanut caramel and nougat covered in milk chocolate. I don't think anything can go wrong with this. That is very tasty. The one thing I will say though is, for those of you who don't know, if you've never tried American and Australian chocolate, is our chocolate does taste different, but that's fine, because this has got nuts and caramel and nougat, all things that I enjoy. And that has been our food tasting for the afternoon. Okay, so I finished the next KU sports holiday romance and it was Seasons Schemings by Katie Bailey and this one is kind of like a cross between The Proposal and a Hallmark Christmas movie or at least what I think a Hallmark Christmas movie is because I don't watch them because I am the person whose Christmas movie is Die Hard <laughs> so I don't watch Hallmark movies. It was cute like it was silly and fun and had a ridiculous premise but you know what it was just a really enjoyable way to spend a couple of hours reading. So this is about Maddie who is a nutritionist and at the very start of the book, in the very first chapter, she's on a reality TV show with her boyfriend, Adam, and they are, it's like a baking show. And he breaks up with her and admits that he's been cheating on her on camera. And she dunks his head in icing because that's exactly the response that you need to have. Anyway, then we jump forward and she has just been hired to work as an entry level nutritionist for Atlanta's hockey team. And on her first day, she accidentally ends up in the men's bathroom and comes face to face with their star center. Seb and everything sort of kicks off from there until there is a moment where they're both having really terrible night. Seb has just found out that his work visa has ended and he can no longer play until it gets sorted out and Maddie has just found out that she has to go and spend Christmas with her ex and his family because her family have told her to. When I say ridiculous premises this is what I mean. Anyway the two decide that the two decide to help each other out and they are and they get, they get married in Vegas and such starts their marriage of convenience, right? The week that they spend with her ex's family and her ex is just delightfully petty and part of me just delights in the delightful pettiness of it all. Yeah, sometimes you just need to be petty. But it was kind of, but it was sweet because they, they clearly like each other enough to be married to each other and then they begin to fall for one another. It is a closed door romance though, hence why I said it's like a Hallmark movie. But you know what, it didn't bother me so much in this one. I was just kind of eager to see what happened and the green card storyline did sort of give me a little bit of stress but you know what, you don't need to be stressed about it. It was fine. Highly entertaining if you just want something that is low angst, a little bit dramatic and full of holiday shenanigans. Happy Tuesday, what are we, the 12th of December. And uh, I'm melting because it is very hot outside at the minute. I've just gotten home. I've had to pick up a bunch of packages, so I thought I would open them. I, some of them, I know what they are. So there's a few bits and pieces. So yeah, I thought I would open them. I'm gonna be reading another hockey Christmas romance tonight. I also might be making some of my Christmas presents. So if I do that, I will film that process too. So yes, this I think has things that I need to make some of my Christmas presents, or it should, hopefully. I have some liquid chalk markers that I need for gifts, and these are some drawstring bags. I'm actually gonna be making some things for the classroom next year from these. Probably not in this video, because I don't think I'll have time. This is a set of books, one of which I have bought for Miller. Okay, so these books are why I should not be allowed to see ads on any of my social media. So I saw this one, this is Aussie Rules Legends Alphabet. So I actually got this for Miller because her father is just a diehard footy person. And then because I was on the website and I was looking at them going, oh, these are really interesting. So I have Hockey Legends Alphabet and also Dyslexic Legends Alphabet. So this is going into the classroom. This is going onto my hockey bookshelf. There's also my Eco Modern Essentials box. This is Essential Oils. It's like a quarterly subscription that I get. 
and it includes essential oils and all sorts of other things. I've shown these in videos in the past, so there's always a DIY card. There is always a little magazine booklet. So this theme is New Beginnings Rituals. Excellent. Okay, this is good because I need some of this stuff for gifts. There was one year I made a whole bunch of aromatherapy stuff as gifts. So there is a rose water mist thing, which let's be real, I need this today. Oh my God, I really need that. Okay, so that's great. It smells absolutely awesome. There is some witch hazel. There are some little roller balls for making your own essential oil roll-ons. We have sweet orange, purify, juniper, tea tree. I just need tea tree essential oil in every room of my apartment because I go through it like nobody's business. Calm and de-stress, which is my favorite essential oil blend. Frankincense, clove, and also the anxiety blend. Also can never have too much of that blend because uh, yeah. And then also there is an energy roller ball as well. That is a good box that will come in handy for various things. The other thing I bought myself, and this is partly for the classroom. <laughs> this is the Bluey book advent calendar and I got it for like $12. And there is a little mini book for every day leading up to Christmas. So I actually haven't opened any of these. So I thought I would open them and share them because I'm five years old. I'm not even teaching five year, five year olds this year and I still bought this. Okay, so book number one is Meet Bluey and Bingo. Number two is Meet Mum and Dad. Coloring fun. Oh, it's a coloring book. That's cute. That's a bit cute. I'll probably keep that one for Miller. Four for four. Fruit bat. Oh, this is a longer one. So some of them are quite short, some of them are quite a bit longer. So that's why I'm quite happy to take them into the classroom next year. Five. Oh, another coloring book. Love that. Uh, six. Okay, Louis the pool. Seven. Have I gone a bit bluey mad this year? Yes, yes I have. Oop. Another coloring book. Maybe I'll just have to keep one for myself as therapy. <laughs> Eight. Bob Bilby is the next one. Going up to 12, so I need nine. So is this like every alternate one is a coloring book? Either way, little rewards in the classroom. Ten. Oh, that's another coloring one. Eleven. This over here. The beach. And 12 was on the back. So yeah, it must be alternating little coloring books. So that's cute. So let's see. Coloring, coloring. Those are all, nope, that's coloring, that's all stories. So, so far, six coloring, six stories. I mean, for $12, it's a bit cute. It's been a big day, met my class today. They were fun. Got to teach with my teaching partner who will be teaching on Thursdays and Fridays when I'm not in the classroom. So that was also fun. I am tired. So it is a little bit later and we are going to be reading Christmas Cupid by Ilsa Madden Mills. This is a forced proximity slash snowed in story between an injured professional hockey player and a heroine called Iris who has a dog. That's all I know about it. It is about 182 pages. So I'm going to read it and I will check in with you guys in a little bit. All right. So I'm about 40% of the way into Christmas Cupid and this is definitely going for that rom-com feel in the way that both the characters just automatically dislike one another. So they are both tricked into staying at the same tavern uh, the week before Christmas by the heroine's brother, who is a, who is the captain of a hockey team. And one of his teammates is injured, has a wrist injury, and he is basically setting him up with his sister. And the two of them are not getting along at all. It is the kind of ridiculous story where the hero has to face off with a black bear in chapter seven. Now they've just argued over who's having the bed and who is sleeping on the couch in front of the fire. And I don't know, if you like characters who are constantly arguing with one another, then this will probably be for you. But I'm going to finish reading it now. Also, both of them came to a cabin in the middle of nowhere with inappropriate clothing. Like he doesn't have any clothes except for what he was wearing. And she has a range of very nice, but inappropriate for mountain cabin living boots of course so i finished christmas cupid and it was fine like it's under 200 pages long and if you like that rom-com kind of hate to love sort of story that's very much in stop i think it takes place over the course of a week then you will probably enjoy it it wasn't my favorite no i think i've read other books for this vlog that i enjoyed more but you know for what it is it's probably an enjoyable read that people will enjoy. It's particularly if you like Ilsa Madden Mills writing, it's, it's very her. I think I'm going to try and do some Christmas gifts. 
It is a few days later and I didn't get a chance to wrap up this vlog or read any more books because there was some family stuff that came up but I'm just jumping in to close out this vlog and to say thank you to B for inviting me to participate in her vlog collaborations for December. I had a great time reading these sports holiday romances they were really fun. I think my favorite was definitely the Amy Aislin book. Definitely check out that book or Amy Aislin's books and yeah I will go back to that series at some point. I just haven't had time to do it um, in the last little bit, but I was so excited to do this. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. I know it's a bit of a long vlog, so sorry, not sorry, <laughs> but yes, enjoy. I have a few more videos coming out before Christmas, so I hope that you enjoy them. And if you would like to let me know that you're here, but you don't leave a comment for free, leave any kind of hockey or holiday emoji. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you're in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everyone.